Bird and Bird, hopefully that's a name that's familiar, but just quickly to give you an overview of what we're about, this most trusted guide for clients in a changing environment. So as I was describing at lunch, I, th I think of us as the firm for the knowledge economy. Um, so we're about helping with disruptive technology in particular and some of the things that come around that. Now, interestingly, why you're all here is because our market is being disrupted as well, not just by technology, but by a whole raft of different things. Um, we are a firm which has these three differentiators. Look familiar? Probably all of you have much the same <laughs> one way or another. So <laughs> differentiation is a challenge in our market. Um, and so uh, why am I up here to talk about uh, M&A as a, as a transformational force? Um, basically because all of these offices, which we now have, which have been established over the last, well, if you discount London in 1846, the last 23 years or so, um, a lot of this has come about as a result of merger. Um, some greenfield openings, um, some sort of, I suppose, team hires, uh, but merger uh, or acquisition, strictly, I'm conditioned to say merger. People don't like to be acquired. They like to be merged with if they're in the um, legal industry. Um, so uh, you'll hear me using the word merger a lot when really what I mean is acquisition. But most of the acquisitions that we have done have been bolt-on. And so that comes with a particular uh, tone, I think. Um, and so we, I, we, in a sense, have avoided transformation. Um, through merger because we've actively avoided merging with somebody who is either our size um, or uh, bigger than us um, because we feel um, that the culture that we've got as a business is part of our strength, is part of the differentiator that we have. So we've avoided transformation. So why the hell has Billy Joe asked me to talk at Transformation Conference about M&A? Well, that was a question I asked myself as well. Um, so I'm going to try and answer that through the, the rest of my slides. But I just wanted to give you that context about the firm that I work in and what we've done. Um, I think nonetheless what I'm going to cover are things that are relevant um, to everybody, basically. Um, but uh, you, I think just put it into that context in terms of what we've done. We've not done uh, a, a, trans a big transatlantic merger uh, where two huge firms, for example, come together. So I don't have that perspective to give, but I will give a perspective on, on what we have done. Okay, so uh, one thing to think about. There are other industries, perhaps. I'm not sure that even in the big transatlantic uh, mergers, the, the senior partners, and if there are some here, then I welcome um, them to contradict me. I don't think they've actually started out with the idea of transforming themselves. But I think it's a valid um, question to ask. Because I think you can do a merger, and it can lead to transformation. But equally, you could start with the objective of trying to transform your business. And in, the, in our um, sort of current market, with the, the challenges that face firms, all the things we were talking about earlier in the, in the um, session around uh, change and, and transformation, it might be that a merger is, or an acquisition or whatever, is a way of achieving that transformation. It's a high risk way, and we'll come back to that. But there may well be, it may be the point that you get to a point as a managing partner or a management team where you think the only way we're actually gonna be able to kick this forward is to create so much disruption within the organization that actually will change will come from it. Um, we have a phrase within the firm where we talk about raising the D, classic consultant speak, sorry James, um, but a sort of raising the dissatisfaction to get people thinking, trying to, to, to sort of confront or challenge some of the sacred cows that all our organizations have. So uh, that's just a word on, on, uh, on causality, as I call it, because I think you can end up transforming the business almost by accident if you do a, an ill-advised merger or acquisition. Uh, by the same token, you might start out with that as your objective. So everything starts with strategy. Uh, I would say that, wouldn't I? My, my title includes strategy, um, strategy director in it. So everything starts with strategy. But just to explain why we've done what we've done, the firm for the knowledge economy, um, the World Bank basically uh, does research uh, each, uh, it's every few years, um, which leads to what they call the knowledge economy index. And that's ranks countries based on um, how knowledge rich they are, how effective they are at sharing information, how effective they are at generating insight, innovation, etc. Um, and so but these are the countries which are the leading 10 uh, countries as knowledge economies on a global basis. Bird & Bird is the only firm which has offices in Sweden, Finland, Denmark. All of those, or well, the only international firm I should say. There are some regional firms that are in those locations. Um, and so when we go out to the organization and say we think we should be acquiring a firm in 
XYZ country, we're able to relate it back to the strategy to be the firm for the knowledge economy and say, we need to be in these places if, we're, if we are going to live the vision that we've created for ourselves. So that helps enormously when you're tr seeking to justify why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. If, it can, if you can relate it back to the strategy, then you start, it's the, the discussion we had earlier, you start from a good kickoff place. So we, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that our partners have just gone, oh, well, off you go then. Uh, that all makes sense. It's as simple as that. But you start from a credible uh, position. So uh, that's my point about uh, strategy. Incidentally, um, just because there's gaps here, it doesn't mean you can expect to see bird and bird opening in all those places in the next uh, uh, two or three years. Uh, there are other criteria that we use as well. But the knowledge economy uh, index is, is one of the things that we look at alongside all the normal things you'd expect to do before going forward with an office opening or a, or a merger, such as, um, I don't know, how, how developed is the marketplace? Uh, what's the industry structure for us? We're looking at technology, how, much t how, ma how many technology companies, um, sort of incubators, that, that sort of thing, how much of that is there? Um, so therefore, is that of interest to us? Where's so, the UK fall on that, by the way? The UK is, uh, I think it's 14th, wherever that question came from. Interestingly, the US <laughs> is 13th, and most people expect that to be a lot higher. Um, the country is quite the vet, there's sort of quite a bit of up and down. Uh, but those three at the top, the Scandinavian countries, have been pretty consistently at the top for the last certainly 10 years. Sorry, did somebody else put a hand up? Was that a question or was that your, that was your question in the beginning? Okay. Okay, so tips on strategy. I have one, one of the best tips I've heard about strategy. It's amazing how often I, go, I speak to people and they, it's very difficult for them to explain what the firm that they're working for is trying to achieve. Um, so clarity on your objectives. Um, we've, we've found where we've uh, been, I mean a lot of the time when we're doing a merger or an acquisition, there is a transformation. It might not be for the firm as a whole, but there's a transformation going on within the organization that we're taking over. Um, and for some of them, and we'll come to this, uh, that's a, perhaps a bit of a challenge. Um, so you have to still go through the, what you would call the process, I suppose, of, of hearts and minds and all that sort of stuff. But you don't need to do that right across the whole firm. Um, and that's certainly from my, where I sit, that's an advantage for um, for getting these things completed, if you like, or, or at least achieving the, the realizing the benefits that you start off um, expecting. Um, so, is M and A the right way to achieve uh, growth for your organisation? I mean, we we ask the question. What, what, coming back to my pet cat, there are too many pet projects in our firm, in other firms, I'm sure. Um, where partner X has got it in his or her head that this is the best thing ever. Um, usually what that means is the best thing for their practice, and usually their individual practice, never mind their practice area. Like a, a pet, if you've got a cat or a dog, you feed them, you walk them, you probably smooth them or pat them or whatever, depending on the pet. Um, and what you get in return is a big bill for the food. Um, you clear up all the mess. Uh, and if you're our cat, you leave dead mice. Um, everywhere around the house. So uh, that's not, not um, uh, indistinguishable, let's say, from some of the pet projects that the partners we have come to us with. Um, they take a lot, a lot of time in order to keep them groomed, um, keep them fed, etc., etc. And at the end, you probably get a dead mouse. So uh, we, we work quite hard to make sure that people, um, that, that there's a reference back to the strategy, um, that people can see that there is a there's a logic, if you like, to the things that we are um, uh, encouraged, or that we allow to happen, that's perhaps a bit strong, that we uh, approve, let's say. I and mean, there's, a, there's a massive approval process behind all of this, like any partnership. But just in terms of getting through that first stage of senior management, um, there is a, uh, uh, we expect people to be pretty clear about the benefits to the firm as a whole that they expect to see. Uh, and there are other ways of achieving it a lot of the time. So um, as I come on, I think it's the next slide, yeah. And I need to um, defer here to Deloitte, whose, whose uh, matrix this is. Um, this is their uh, take on um, sort of acquisitions and, and uh, both in terms of the, the size of them and then what you're trying to achieve uh, by them. And um, what this arrow shows is, is the more up here you get, the riskier things become. Um, so a lot of the bolt-on acquisitions we've done have been 
over here in this corner, which is actually reasonably small um, and therefore not so difficult, not so disruptive to the organization as a whole. Although one of my colleagues who, sits in, who is sitting here in this, uh, in this room uh, will uh, probably disagree with me because he spent a lot of time on the other side of the world uh, for the most recent roll-up uh, merger that we did. So um, the, the point I'm making here is, and you'll note that in Deloitte's model, they talk about transformative along the bottom here. Um, as soon as you start to get into that sort of space, we find um, that, or, well, we've been, to be honest, we've been shy of it. Uh, we've tended to think that there is lower hanging fruit that we can perhaps pick first. Um, now, for some firms, uh, for, in any industry actually, uh, you may not be left with much option. But in our, in our marketplace, in the legal marketplace at the moment, I still think you can do a lot of good just over on this side of the diagram without necessarily needing to take on, um, on the really difficult stuff. Um, yeah, so this is where I want to throw it out slightly to, uh, how many, in the room, how many people are in firms who've done mergers recently or acquisitions, whichever, whatever you want to call it, who've done a bit higher so I can just see the, the sort of, so I would say probably a third Maybe between a third and a half of the people. And, and for, for those of you who put your hands up, how many of you were, do you think the objective for the merger was basically revenue expansion? Okay, actually fewer than I thought. I, I anticipated there'd be a lot more. So, so I'll just go down this less than, uh, I mean, anybody do it for cost reduction? No. Process improvement? No. Acquisition of expertise? Okay, right, so that's the, other, that's the other big one by the looks of it. Anybody done it as a, an aggressive competitor or anti-competitor move? Okay, that's good, I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Um, and then, well, extension of capabilities, arguably acquisition of expertise as well. Um, I, the, it, bird and bird, um, we, most of our deals have been probably revenue expansion. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, you can argue either way. We've often been opening in new countries, so arguably that's a new market. Um, but that, that market is, we're not doing it, we're, most of the time we're not going into a market purely to enter that market. And we did the deal in Australia um, at the end of last year. It wasn't because we particularly felt we had to have a presence in Australia. It was because Australia, we felt, um, helped us with the network offering that we're trying to provide to our clients on a certainly regional, Asia-Pacific basis, um, but also globally as well. Um, so it was probably revenue expansion, but there was a, arguably a, a new market. So from a transformation perspective, make the tough decisions early. Um, one of the things that we are quite hard on is the question, and it comes early on, and it comes early on because uh, it, it affects the individuals involved, how many people are coming across as partners and how many people will, or as equity partners within the global partnership and how many are coming across as local partners. You would be amazed how long it takes to get through that discussion. Well, perhaps you wouldn't be amazed. Um, I always think, well, that won't take too long, but it will, typically, it will take, of the, in the, in the pre-deal phase, that will take perhaps 50% of the time um, to get to the point where you can actually uh, say, okay, the deal's, deal's a go. Um, Understandably, uh, there's, a, there's a whole heap of, and this goes into the psychology and the psyche, really, of the, of the partners or the lawyers. There's a lot of status um, stuff wrapped up in, am I still going to be called a partner? Even if I'm not a global equity partner, will I be a local partner? Will I, be able to, will I have partner on my business card? You know, will I be able to vote? I mean, some of the, actually, a lot of the time, we rarely get that. Will I be able to vote on firms' decisions? Nobody really asks that, uh, which is arguably one of the things that you'd expect an owner to be concerned about. But no, a lot of the time it's, it's more the status point. So you've got to get through that. We, 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 unless we can get through that, then the, the deal dies, usually. Um, and I, in, in some of the early discussions we had in advance of the deal we did in Denmark, um, we walked away from a number of deals because really the expectations of the people we were talking to were, um, well, they were unrealistic. Um, but if you don't get that sorted, you don't have the leadership of the new group on side. So from, in terms of then of all, everything that's coming down the line at them after that, sort of after the deal, so through implementation and integration, you've got no chance unless you've got a relatively unified and motivated group of people. And if they know that they've got, or they're clear about what their um, status is going to be after, after the deal, then you've got more chance of, of pushing that through. So uh, we spend a lot of time on that. How, do we make all the tough decisions early enough? Do we make all the tough decisions at all? No. There are times where 
quite clearly certain issues have been swept under the carpet. And then we, we reap the whirlwind probably six to 12 months after, after the deal's done. Uh, and uh, we definitely have uh, in our history situations where uh, a, a deal has, relative to the timing of the um, expected benefits, um, we are, we've ended up years behind without giving away too much, years behind where we expect it to be, because we've then basically had to do all the tough decision-making has happened once, once the deal's done, so once people are in the organization. Um, and then it becomes much more difficult and much more expensive to actually um, sort stuff out. So making the tough decisions early is an is a important tip. So one of the other things, um, we talked about this earlier, be clear on your objectives. Now, I say clear, you probably won't be able to read that. Um, but the, uh, the, um, the idea here is, is chunk it down. So more often than not, you'll be doing, so back to the point about revenue expansion, if the primary focus of your uh, M&A is in order to achieve revenue expansion, then one of the most important things you've got to do is work on um, uh, which clients we're going to target, who are the client teams going to be, how do we go out to, to sell the idea of the merger and the new firm to the you know, 10, 15, whatever it is, most important clients. So we're quite specific in terms of what, what we talk about um, we even give them little you know, F1, P1, R2 tags so that people can have a shorthand to talk about objectives. Um, it's something that, that happens through the, the deal, um, so negotiation of the deal. This would appear in the business case that then uh, um, circulated to all partners. Uh, and what I've, what I've taken out um, is then we're quite specific about what KPIs we use to, to monitor progress. And we get that agreed up front. And so in the deal that we've done in Denmark, I'm pleased to be able to say that we're bang on business case two and a bit years in, um, and we're bang on with the KPIs as well. Not because everything is, has been hunky-dory, but because people have understood that the reasons why we're looking at particular KPIs, whether it's operational or financial, is, is in order to make sure we achieve the objectives of the deal. And if we've got people bought in right up front on what we're trying to achieve with the deal, as simple as revenue expansion or whatever, then they, they get the read across and, and we, it, it, it generates such profitable conversations within uh, the management of the business um, when you've got one of these filled in um, and that right-hand column and people are explaining where they've got to, why they haven't got further, why they've done better than they anticipated. Uh, and so you, you move the conversation on into, well, how do we do it better? You know, how can we improve? Why are you hitting roadblocks? What can we do as a management group to, to sort of free the road up for you? So th this has proved to be a very helpful sort of little tool. I mean, it's quite simple, really, um, but a, a sort of on the ground and, and helping to, to ensure the, the, all the business functions that are helping us um, do the, uh, uh, get to day one and then the integration are clear about what the objectives are. Um, then it means people make the right decisions and you don't have to sort of micromanage it. People can take decisions within work streams. Okay, so a note on stakeholder management. So there, there are uh, probably four main stakeholders I'm going to identify here. Um, and I think they all potentially pull in different directions. Um, so management, why are they doing a, a m and Oh, I want to do a deal. You know, some of them are, uh, are sort of like fed up with advising clients on doing deals and they want to do it themselves. So a lot of the time they're in it because it's quite sexy to do a deal. Uh, the partnership is going, bloody hell, that's going to be expensive. Um, so you've already got potential conflict between those two. Uh, the target or the merger partner is saying we're just going to be consumed by this. I mean, not that Burnham is massive, but we're much bigger than the people that we've taken over. So their concerns are all about um, uh, what it's going to feel like. There's much more human um, sort of stuff. And then the functional leads, and this is interesting because this is all of you in this, in this, in this room. Um, we find that there's uh, sometimes as much resistance to uh, a merger idea amongst the functional heads as there is uh, sort of in perhaps in the partnership or skepticism, let's say, within management. Um, and so it comes back to strategy. Uh, so that's, that's a key thing. But uh, we, we don't underestimate how important it is to have these guys on board because all of you will have teams who are going to be fundamental to actually making stuff happen. Uh, and if there's a bit of resistance in that space, then everything stops. Because more often than not, back to the point we were making earlier, the, the, the number of or the resource that's available has probably got a day job. 
Um, and so if you're taking that resource away from its day job in order to work on a project which could be really intensive, um, then these guys have got a problem in terms of how do they do deliver business as usual. Uh, so uh, we, we, we work quite hard to make sure all of those, uh, and probably others as well, but all of those groups at a minimum are all in the loop, bought in, understand. Easily said, takes lots of meetings. So this is just, this is just the way how, how we organize ourselves. So those are the, the phases, if you like, within um, how we go about doing the deal. And then we organize ourselves such that if you don't have senior level sponsorship, then forget it. Uh, we have a deal team who, who are sometimes there's overlap with uh, the integration team. Um, sometimes it's completely different. So the deal team will be comms. It will be legal, uh, so do, i.e. doing the, the documentation. Um, it will be my team, so strategy corporate development, working on the business case and approvals, uh, um, sort of doing the presentations around the partnership to build support, to sell the idea. Um, uh, and all the time, it's, there's, a re there's, uh, there's a sort of a, uh, a cascade down and then a, whatever the opposite of a cascade up is into, into the senior level sponsorship to make sure that we're on track with what we're trying to achieve. Um, that, that is a very much an iterative process. It goes round and round and round. I'm sure similar to a lot, what a lot of you do in terms of your normal project management. It's just a project, ultimately. Um, but it, it, it can, people, people get carried away because it's, it, it's M&A. Um, and, and that tends to drive a little bit of the irrational exuberance that was uh, popular about 10 years ago. Um, so uh, so the, these, this is just the way that we organize, our, organize ourselves. And, and it's the, 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 the point I suppose I'm trying to make is, is that it's consistency. It's not that management say, right, you're going to do a deal, off you go, go and do the deal. Um, it's not that the deal team sort of get the deal done, get it all signed, basically deliver it to the, to the um, functional team and say, right, can you just go and sort us at an office in Sydney? Um, it's about making sure that all these things are joined together because if it, it's, you're going to go wrong quite quickly if you don't have those things integrated. Um, and then this is just a question. I throw this out there. We tried uh, two, three years ago, we tried to do the, the integration. So by that, I mean the, the, the period uh, up to day one, uh, the period from uh, sort of that first 100 days, and then the period after. And I'm, I'm still in the integration phase on the deal that we did in Denmark, which was two and a bit years ago. Um, so we, try, we tried uh, in that, at that point to to do things by process rather than by function. And we got kickback from the functions. Um, because when you start to do things like systems and reporting, uh, in our organization, that meant combining IT and some parts of finance uh, as, work, as a work stream working together to try and make stuff happen. Now, that, that made sense from a business perspective. Systems and reporting, the reporting typically emerges from the, the, the morass of data that goes into, the, uh, into our practice management system. But we got pushed back from uh, the both functions, actually, to say, well, we, you know, this isn't how we work. We, you know, we, like, we, we see ourselves as we wear this hat or we wear that hat. So we actually went back to, to splitting it out, accounting and finance and systems. If I'm honest, I'm not sure that that's right. Uh, the more recent um, integration that we've done, we've had, there's been a few um, issues, if you like, in terms of because things haven't been pulled together and think uh, with, a, with a view or targeting what the business benefits are. Um, so I'm not sure, frankly, my, my jury is out as to which way I think is best. I think my instinct tells me the process is more likely to deliver the business benefits. Um, and then measure, how do you measure it? God, it's difficult. I mean, we, we, we have a... Um, a practice management system, and that really is the only place that we can go to for, for proper data. Um, and so all the partners will say, well, you know, how much, you know, what, what's, has the merger been successful? Well, how do you measure it, first of all? And then even if you've got an idea of what, what success measures there are, getting it out of the system is really difficult. So for all you um, providers of uh, sort of uh, systems, etc., cetera, um, out there, uh, I'd, love, I'd love an easier way to do it than the way we have to do it at the moment. Um, so what tends to happen is it becomes all about, well, what's happening financially? Um, so back to the chart that, or the table that I had up earlier, which had all the different chunking out by clients and uh, reputation and so on and so forth. Um, we try to focus people not just on the financial KPIs, um, but on the operational, uh, reputational um, key performance indicators as well. 
Um, so that's how we try to go about um, uh, doing M&A uh, with, to the extent it's transformation or just integrating people into our organization. I leave that um, sort of as an open question. Um, but that's how we've tried to approach it.